What happens if COVID closes the theater? I guess my, sh my struggle with that question is like, is, is like, when is the end? Like, we've already moved theaters. Like, the, Bob, the theater existed before Bob opened the old theater in the last location. Like, so we defaulted on our lease or whatever it is. We have to give up the building. It's not as if, like, that's the end. At the end is like, okay, now 2,000 puppets, like, someone's life's work legacy. Like, what do you do with that? Are you guys ready for a puppet show? Yeah! This is Alex Evans. He's the director and head puppeteer at the Bob Baker Marionette Theater. We've just traveled back in time to November 2018. The theater's throwing a big party on this day because they've decided to leave this space on the edge of Echo Park. It's a big deal because they've been here for over 50 years. To celebrate the move, they're doing multiple performances. People who help start the theater show up, plus hundreds of friends and fans. There are balloons and smiles, and Nicolas Cage brings his family. Alex and his team made the scary decision to move because they have money in the bank for the first time in a while. Enjoy the show. Not surprisingly, marionette theaters don't make huge profits, and teetering on the edge of bankruptcy was the norm for the theater for most of its existence. The Bob Baker Marionette Theater has been in the same location downtown for the last 30 years, but unless something is done, it may not be around much longer. We have families coming here uh, bringing three and four generations, and they say they have to have the Bob Baker Marionette Theater experience. The theater is now more than $400,000 in debt. Baker blames the financial problems on a man who bought the theater from him three years ago. It almost went out of business last year, but Baker and his partner stepped in in July and took control again. Now they are trying to keep it going, but they are running out of money. Alex is all smiles because for the first time in a decade, he knows that their future is bright. They're selling out shows, hitting fundraising goals, and finding newfound popularity. One year later, in November 2019, they open in this historic theater, a bigger space in Highland Park. And then, pandemic. Eight months into this pandemic, I thought, is the Marionette Theater gonna survive this? It turns out COVID is costing them $30,000 a month. At this rate, they think they can pay rent for another month or two. So what do we lose if we lose the oldest Marionette Theater in the US? Bob Baker was lucky. By kindergarten, he already knew what he wanted to do with his life. When I was uh, a very young boy, I went to the Barker Brothers store downtown. I was uh, about six or seven. Saw a puppet show there, spent the whole day, didn't leave from the time it opened to the time it closed. And then I finally bought a puppet of my own, own when I was around seven. Then I was given lessons in puppetry for a solid year. And by the time I was eight, I was doing birthday party shows for movie stars. For the next 30 years, Bob built an empire on strings. He toured the country and performed for thousands of people. Growing tired from touring, he bought an unassuming commercial building on First Street, a few miles west of downtown, and opened in November 1963. For decades, the theater staged productions, while next door, Bob and his team built thousands of marionettes in their workshop. For extra money, Bob lent his talents to movies. Elvis Presley's G.I. Blues, Bedknobs and Broomsticks, and Close Encounters of the Third Kind are just some of the films his work appears in. By 2006, Bob was in his 80s, but still running the theater. This same year, Alex Evans Googled Los Angeles puppets. His search led him to Bob Baker. Alex walked in through the pink door, saw his first show, and never left. Bob died at age 90 in 2014, and Alex took over. 
Hello, my name is Alex. I am from the Bob Baker Marinette Theater. I am the executive director and head puppeteer. Hey, Tom. Started the theater in 2007, and pretty much it felt like I kind of came into a, a, a crisis moment in the world of wonder and magic. Win Winona often says this that like the theater is like a cockroach. You can, you can like try and like squash it, but like it just keeps crawling and, and moving. It's always felt there was some giant insurmountable thing for us to get over, and it it just involved us really developing these muscles to adapt, to fundraise, to make ourselves something that just like kind of couldn't disappear. We've hit perhaps like our most desperate point so far. We have a lot of suggestions of, well, why don't you do outdoor shows? Why don't you do Zoom shows? I mean, our business model is based around what we were doing pre-lockdown, which was, I would say half a dozen, six to eight sold out shows, 100 to 120 people, $20 a ticket, like. Per week. Yeah, per week. So, so on a regular weekend with special events, with maybe two shows, Saturday and Sunday, we would make well over $10,000 in, in two days. So, you know, we would have to do like hundreds of Zoom shows and endanger our staff and have them perform together. There's just no way for us to match the business model that sustains us. You and Alex are more than just co-workers. Yeah, yeah, we live together. But romantic. Yes, <laughs> yes, we're not just roommates. Room. Very quickly, I was like, oh, I really like this person. This is going to be hard to keep this like separate from work, romantic life. There's a legacy of relationships in the oh, theater. Yeah. So with Bob and Alton, yeah. correct? Yeah. Was that something they ever talked about? Not at all. Today as our special guest, we have Bob Baker and Alton Wood. Sexual orientation was not something that was spoken of in the 60s and the 70s, especially you know by men who were running a children's theater. How long have you and Alton been working together? Um, actually, since about 1949, we've been uh, a team. Hard to look back that far, huh? <laughs> it's hard to believe it's been that long. There were so many relationships, long relationships that were formed here, and still continue to be formed here. If you had any complaints in the business, Alton, what, what would your complaint be? How would it be a complaint, but this is my feeling. The average audience does not understand the total amount of dedication, talent, and hard work that goes into creating a puppet production. For some other reason, they understand a lot of the hard work that goes into a television or motion picture production and the same type of hard work that goes into those production goes into putting on a puppet production and in many ways even more because you've got to create the figure before it comes to life and then learn to work it and learn to train so that you can manipulate it. Spending time at Bob Baker, I started to feel like I was in an alternative universe with its red carpet, white daisies, and thousands of puppets. The theater somehow does not allow the normal stresses of the outside world in. Passion to create wonder and joy drives Alex and his team to be their truest selves. Bob Baker built a legacy so powerful that his creative energy continues to radiate out, animating both people and puppets to create the world they want to live in. It's easy to let our own self-doubt hamper what we want from life but I keep thinking about something Bob said in an interview. My father used to get mad at me. He, said, he says, I don't understand you. He says, you always say, yes, you can do something. For all my life, I'd always say, yes, I can do it. Yes, I, up to that point, I can do it, I can do it. And he says, how do you know how to do it? I said, oh, no, we'll just try, figure a way. But then I started saying, no, I couldn't. So then he gave me a, a little thing that I had up by my desk until they, my office was changed around. It says, when it's finally decided a job can't be done, watch another fella do it. See you at the next show. <laughs>